I take this opportunity to welcome you once again to our evening service, Deliverance Church Langata. Uh, I would like to read from the Bible in the book of Psalm 122. The Bible says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gate, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together, where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to the testimony of Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For thrones are set there for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your border, within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and my companions, I will now say, peace be within you, because of the house of the Lord our God. I will seek your good. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Of course, we may not be able to, get, to go into the house of the Lord at this moment, but we will still be glad when that time comes. And our prayer is that God is going to shorten the time so that we can be able to gather together and joyfully uh, one of these coming uh, Sundays. Praise the Lord. Let us pray together. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory for your goodness and faithfulness. We pray that you be with us, Lord, as we uh, continue, oh God, in this service. May your grace, oh God, may your word come forth towards us, oh gracious God. We thank you because you are faithful. May all those that listen, oh God, be blessed, oh God, be ministered to. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we give 
Yes, Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We magnify you. You only deserve our praise. You only deserve our honor. You only are worthy of glory. Hallelujah. And to you, all the praise shall come. And to you, all the people shall gather. Thank you, Father. Because we do not gather in our own name. Jesus, oh God, we do not do these things in our own names. But we do it, oh God, in your great name. Hallelujah. The mighty name. The name of Jesus. The name that you have given us for deliverance and salvation. The name that you have given us and you have said is the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. We thank you, Lord. We appreciate you because that name is above every name. That name is exalted. Exalted above every sickness, above every disease, above every circumstance, above every situation, above any other name, above anybody else, oh God. Your name is highly lifted up, Jesus. And that name we will continue to praise. Hallelujah. We worship you, our God. Let's just worship the Lord. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. We lift you up, oh God. We magnify your name. Jesus, you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be exalted. You are worthy to be magnified. There is none like you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. For you have considered our estate. You have considered our situation. You have considered our circumstances. You are familiar with all our ways, oh God. And we give you thanks. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to continue in prayer. Uh, we will pray for supernatural intervention of God in this time. For this virus to be behind us 
and for us to continue to recover and to be restored in the name of Jesus. The businesses that have been lost, that they will recover. The hotel industry will recover. The, the transport industry will, will recover in the name of Jesus. The outcatcher will recover. Let us go before the Lord and pray for all those areas for the supernatural intervention of God. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for intervention, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus Christ, because you are in the intervening, O oh God, in our situation. And this virus, we declare in the name of Jesus, is behind us, O oh Lord, our God. And we are moving forward, O oh Lord. Our economy is recovering, O oh God. Our, our schools are reopening. Churches are being reopened, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, our God. Our economy is recovering, O oh God. Businesses that have been down are rising in the mighty name of Jesus. The in outcatcher industry is recovering, oh God. The transport sector is recovering, oh God. Mighty Father, the hotel industry and tourism is recovering, my Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, those that have lacked food, oh God, because they are no way of earning a living, we declare in the name of Jesus that they are rising, oh God, and will be able to go back to work, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Let us pray for the formulation and protocols, uh, for, you know, for, for reopening the church and reopening schools. Let us pray that uh, the, the guidelines will come forth and the schools and, and churches are going to reopen in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the discussions that are going on. Thank you, Father, for the protocols that are being put in place. Father, we thank you, O oh God, because everything, O oh God, shall be done. Hallelujah. And the leaders that are concerned, both the government leaders, O oh God, and the church leaders, my Father, spiritual leaders, will be able to meet, O oh God, and those things shall be laid out, O oh Jehovah God, and we will be able to go back to church. We will be able to gather together. We will be able to say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We will be glad, O oh God, to gather again in our schools and our children to go back to school, my Father. Father, remove fear. Remove fear and anxiety out of our lives, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We thank you. We worship you. We lift up your holy name. There is none like you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to pray for spiritual awakening. We pray for revival in the land. We pray that God is going to speak to people uh, even as he ministers to them uh, individually. Oh, I know we cannot meet uh, physically, but we are meeting virtually through the services that are coming forth. We pray that the believers lie. Faith is not going to grow cold in the name of Jesus, but we shall be fervent in the spirit praising the Lord, serving the Lord in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, because the church is the pillar, is the ground of truth. We pray for individual members. We pray for believers, oh God. We pray that they shall be robbers in their faith, oh Lord. Their faith shall be set on fire, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, that this situation, oh God, is not going to, 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 to bring down many, oh Jehovah God, but rather their faith is going to be built, oh Lord our God. So when we reopen, my Father, we will gather together as a people that have been taught of you, as a people that are on fire for you, oh God, as a people that are ready to be used for you, oh God, to do the, the, the purposes, oh God, to, 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 to bring forth, oh God, the fruit that you desire us, oh God, to bring forth in the name of Jesus, to go where you want us to go, in the mighty name of Jesus, and to do what you desire us to do, in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, thank you, Lord, because you are reviving our faith. You are reviving our faith, oh Lord, our God. And you are making us better and better. Oh God, the family hotels, oh God, are alive in the mighty name of Jesus. That prayer will continue in our homes, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Our children will learn our faith, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. We worship you for your goodness, for your faithfulness. I want us to pray for the candidates pray for the candidates who are supposed to do their examination. This year we pray that God is going to be with them and is going to help them to, to keep 
focused or both KCPE and the KCSC and as we, or we pray for that we also pray for the national security that God is going to cover our land that uh, we will not see some of this you know sometimes when people stay home and they are in, in anxiety sometimes they have issues that come forth so let us pray that God is going to intervene I also pray for America that is undergoing so much uh, both in terms of the virus and also the demonstrations that are there. Let us go before the Lord. Father, we are grateful. Thank you for our, our KCPE candidates. Thank you for our KCS, K, KCSE candidates. Thank Father, we Jesus pray that they will not lose their focus in the mighty name of Jesus, that they will continue to be focused. Oh Lord, our God, even in such an uncertain uh, calendar, oh Jehovah God, mighty Father, we thank you because you will help them, my Father, in the name of Jesus, especially those are of the household of faith. We pray for them in the name of Jesus. Remember them, oh Lord, our God. That grace, oh God, abound towards them. Mighty Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the security, oh Lord, our God of our nation. We pray, oh God, against terror. We pray, oh God, against criminal gangs. We pray against domestic violence. In the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, that you are going to move over the land, oh God, and to keep us in quietness and good, great peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the United States of America. America, that is uh, as hard the highest cases, oh God, of death because of this virus. And now, oh God, is being tested through demonstrations, oh God, that have been witness over 140 cities. Father, we pray for your intervention. We pray for calm in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we pray, oh God, that the destruction of property will not continue in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, thank you for your intervention. Thank you because you are faithful. We worship you, we honor you, and we glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you so much for connecting with us today and uh, engaging in our live service. This is our Wednesday evening prayer service. Uh, we continue to encourage you every time that we stream live that you continue to connect with uh, with our live stream and lunch hour also comes every lunch time from 1 15 and uh, our sunday service comes at 10 uh, on sundays uh, yeah so please make sure you connect with our live streams so that we can move together there's something that uh, really is very good when we are all together and we move together Hallelujah. So also uh, continue to give. Uh, the number, our till number is provided on your screen for your giving, for your tithes and your offering. Please continue giving on the, or any other giving and pledge that you have made before and you want to honor, you can send it through that till number and uh, probably send a text and say it is covering this. So thank you so much for connecting with us. May the Lord bless you. I would like to welcome our bishop to come and pray for the giving and as well as uh, bring the message. And I believe he has been bringing a great message to us about faith. Let us be built in our faith in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, let us pray together. And thank you so much once again. I want to reiterate the importance of what your faithfulness has meant for the church. This has been the third month since the people gathered in this place. I am glad to say that God has really been gracious through your faithfulness. We are, you know, everything, everything is going on well. We have been able to pay our bills, pay our staff, and do everything they needed to do. And for me, I'm so excited to see the faithfulness of God uh, through the faithful giving. Those who send your offering, even if you are not here, you send your offering. Those who have paid the tithes feel free. We really, really sincerely appreciate you. And we pray that God would bless you in a great way. Father, we thank you for Deliverance Church Langata family, who we have been meeting uh, online and through the virtual services. And dear Father, we look in anticipation of the government uh, lifting the the ban on uh, gathering on churches though with certain protocols 
But Father, we look forward to coming together again, for we know that that is what you have desired. So we pray, dear Father, for the president, even as he addresses the nation uh, in, the, in the next couple of days, to be able to review uh, the, the situation of the, uh, whether it's curfews or, or lock, uh, virtual lockdown on certain cities, whatever is your will. We also want to take this opportunity to pray for the neighborhood of our church, the Kibra slums, very, very uh, disturbed by the escalation of the numbers of the COVID-19 cases in Kibra. And we pray, dear Father, that you intervene. This is maybe uh, the largest slum in sub-Saharan Africa. And dear Father, we pray it will not be an epicenter of this COVID-19, that the people in the slums would take greater responsibility in adhering to the measures that the government has put in place for uh, protection, uh, protecting themselves, oh God, from uh, infections. We thank you for your faithfulness, even as we wait on you and trust you, not only for Kibra, but other places like the East Lee and uh, Old Town Mombasa who are waiting for the calf, uh, for the, uh, for, for the, for the uh, prisons to be open. I pray for guidance and direction. I just pray, dear Father, to cause this virus to come to uh, its, its peak and then go down and just add for your glory. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's appreciate the worship team as they take uh, uh, the seat. Thank you so much, uh, Freddie and the entire team. We really, really appreciate your uh, devotion, your sacrifice to be able to come like you have always come. And uh, taking time uh, to continue to rehearse in preparation, uh, we really, really want to say how much we do appreciate you. I want to bring the message. This is lesson number three. Lesson number three, and this time around, just sticking to a passage of scripture and trying to uh, give uh, uh, Father lessons about the importance of taking the shield of faith as uh, stated in the book of Ephesians chapter number, number 6 and verse 16. And uh, I will just read that scripture and then we're going to share. Then this is lesson number three. If you want to follow up uh, or, or everything that we do is usually in record and probably because this is a series I'm taking for a while, we might package for somebody to get uh, the tips or address in this very, very important subject about taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. One of the things that is important in our understanding about the, the, the shield of faith is the responsibility that you take. Uh, you take the shield of faith. It is something that you pick. Uh, and uh, very, very importantly, that, it, it, you know, that if you did not take it, you know, there's no way it can help. So, and that is that a very, very important thing for us to understand. And notice, actually the emphasis I like in this text it says above all. And consider that aspect. The word of God is saying above all. Taking the shield of faith. This suggests the, the importance of faith in our spiritual pilgrimage. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith he shall be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked. F friends, wherever you listen to this sermon from, I want to emphasize the importance of faith in you being able to connect to your God-given redemptive purpose. It is important to know that the way in which we receive from God and the way in which we can relate to God, the way we in a way the way we do business with God is when we have faith. I'm fully persuaded 
that each one of us need to be on high alert to defend ourselves against the fairy that of the wicked one that may come through uh, poisoned words that can be spoken. We need to guard not only our hearts but our minds and to stand firm against the enemy's attack. Take up the shield of faith. Paul pictures the believer in the heat of battle. The air is thick with framing arrows and that had been dipped in, uh, uh, in pitch and set on fire. It's a life or, a, or death situation, what we picture in this text. How will he survive? And Paul says in the scripture that we are looking at, and this is the third lesson, above all, taking up the shield of faith. It means that the shield, which is, faith, which is the shield of faith, is so vital if you and I will be able to defeat the enemy. And that is why, the, 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 of course, we know there is a lot of things we are taught to do. And then the emphasis above all. And consider that to be a very, very important qualifier of the importance of faith in our spiritual pilgrimage. I hope that we can appreciate the praise of faith in our journey of, in our spiritual pilgrimage. Because we know when we say, I don't know how seriously we take this, but it is the word of God that tells us that without faith, it is impossible to praise God. That he that comes to God must believe that God is and that he rewards those that seek him. One of the things that informs our prayer life and our devotion to God is his faith. And the Bible says, whatever we do outside of faith is sin. That's how serious this business is. And how important for us to be able to capture what the Lord would desire for us to capture in the lesson of the shield of faith. I submit to you today that the Bible is full of stories of believers who are in overwhelming circumstances, where they despaired of life itself. What did they do? So they cried out to God and trusted in him. In many cases, God delivered them from death. Would you like to, to, to extinguish every framing that of the devil? that the devil ever tries to shoot at you. Does that proposal sound too good to be true? Ephesians chapter 6 assures, I, assures us, rather, you and I, that the shield of faith, when lifted high in front of, in front of us, will be supernaturally empowered to defend us Again, it's the fairy dance of the enemy. But more than, more than that, we will literally be able to extinguish every single fairy dart that the devil will ever try to send our way. So today, we'd like to draw our attention to several very important points. Number one, we notice the phrase wherewith ye shall be able. Remember, we are trying to do a proper analysis of this scripture. And if you can bring that scripture up again in the, in the overhead, just for a moment. Uh, above all, taking the shield of faith which will be able, with which you'll be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one. So notice how the sequence is. First, an emphasis of how important this is. And then saying the reason, which is, you know, wherewith you are able to quench all the darts of the wicked one. 
For me, the, this COVID-19 uh, threat and season that we have been through since our first case was reported has taught me so much. There's so much I've learned. And I pray that you have also learned some lessons. But what has surprised me when I have read reports and I've seen uh, engaged with people and seen how uh, they, they, they are treating the situation of what is going on. First is, I've told people many times, since when I speak to believers, our faith is being tested. And that is why I've been very deliberate in my teaching. And you can walk through everything I've shared since we set into this a season of uncertainty and, uh, and threat on our health. Because all I've tried to do is to fortify the hearts of the believers, to know that when we stand firm in faith, nothing can move us. We are going to be safe. We are going to be secure. And you and I must understand. I, 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 you know, I compare what we are going through with situations where there is... Uh, something that is threatening and maybe everybody is trying to hide but there must be a way in which we are going to be different from people who do not have what we have because number one we cannot behave as if we are so fearful of plagues or fearful of sicknesses because don't we know the promise we have in Christ so that's a, that's an, an issue that each one of us needs to evaluate ourselves. Where is your faith? Is your faith in your self-protection mechanism? Or is it your faith in your total dependence on God? And I'm not trying to suggest that you can put away whatever precautions have been advised. I'm not telling you to rebel against the government when you are taught to be able to, whenever you go to the public, you have to, you have to wear your mask. I'm not trying to suggest that there's no vitality in washing of hands and, uh, and doing all the things that we need to do. And social distancing. But I want to submit to you that with everything you do, the most important thing above all is to take the shield of faith. Because what is happening now with all the news that you receive, these news are coming like darts that are thrown at you and you feel shaken and frightened and that is why some people are sinking to depression and hopelessness and helplessness. But when we have God with us, we know that we are safe. How important this is, brethren. And how important is it for you and I to hold firm to what we believe. To hold firm to the promises that God has given us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Paul uses these Greek words to explain the supernatural empowerment that occurs when a believer uses a shield of faith. When a believer lifts his shield high and holds it out in front of, uh, in front of the, uh, the, the enemy, that shield is divinely energized and the believer starts bravery against every assault of the devil. That shield of faith becomes dynamically and supernaturally empowered to act as an impenetrable, you know, an impenetrable war of defense against the enemy's tactics. I'm saying that your shield of faith cannot be penetrated by the arrows of COVID-19 or any other disease for that matter or any other plague. So when you hold it high and confess what you believe, you possess the promises that God has given so, brethren, the shield of faith is powerful. It makes us fortified. It makes us invulnerable and armed to the teeth. It equips us to hold an ironclad position. It turns us into, spiritual, into a spiritual tank so, so that we have the ability to move 
our position forward without taking any losses whatsoever. This doesn't mean the devil won't try to stop you. But when the shield of faith is held out in front of you, as it ought to be, you become divinely energized to quench every arrow directed to you. How does this apply to, to us as believers? Romans chapter number 10 verse 17 says, our faith is increased by the hearing of God's word. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse number 26, the word of God is likened to water. So as we regularly submit ourselves to the word of God, we soak our faith with the word, just as the Roman soldier soaked his shield in water. Now the last aloe is most likely the picture that Paul had in, in his mind when he wrote about the fairy darts of the wicked. Now, there is no doubt that the devil will try to shoot his arrows in your direction, but having a shield of faith soaked in the word of God gives us a double protection against against any form of attack regardless of what you may be dealing with against each attack now it guarantees that the enemy's darts will have little or no effect even if they get close enough to strike your heart mind or emotions in the midst of the situation you find yourself facing so today I want to urge you to soak your faith in the word of God. Soak your faith in the word of God. It is important to know that this is the sword of the spirit. The word of God. Take time to memorize, take time to meditate, take time to reflect on what is revealed in the word of God. One of the things I said early in the journey of this closure and the situation we found ourselves learning into is that you can make a deliberate decision that you're going to spend more time reading the Bible than you have done before. You're going to spend time reading books I, and I hope that you do not spend all your time maybe watching television or lamenting the hopelessness and listening to all the news from all over the world, being so scared about the reports that are coming from all over about the effect of this virus. But, but you have used your time wisely in spending time with the word of God. For again we know that faith comes by hearing and the hearing of the word of God. And sometimes you need to learn what it is to read the word and to read it again and again and to meditate on scriptures that talk about divine protection, divine healing and all these things until such a time that you fortify your heart and you know and you know it that I am safe because I've committed myself to the trust and confidence of the word of God. The difference between one believer and the other, and we've said this many times in Deliverance Church Langata, what makes you distinct from another believer is how you are growing in the knowledge of the truth and how you are growing in grace and how you are growing in faith. And I've said this before, and it's worth mentioning again, that the way we grow our faith is by exercising it. And faith can be compared with muscles. The reason why people build muscles is because they lift weights. And they are doing things that are exercising their muscles. If you don't exercise, if you don't do anything, your muscles can even collapse. So it is important for us to know, now we are being tested by being told there is a disease 
that you can get very easily because somebody, uh, you have picked something that has come from somebody who has it and there's no known disease, I mean rather known treatment. Then you are told that, you know, it's a disease where sometimes you may have no symptoms, but you, you have it. And that bothers you very much, like it bothers me. So, then we get all these theories that come from all of our different opinions, different thoughts. Some things could be things that are true, others could not be true. But the bottom line is that if the enemy tries to launch a surprise attack on your health, you know you have a shield. If he tries to bring a surprise attack against your finances, you know you have a shield. If he tries to bring a surprise attack against your marriage, against your family, even when it comes, it is against the church, or your business, for those of you who have businesses, or a job, you always remind yourself they will have no impact on me because I'm holding a word-soaked faith shield. And this brings a responsibility to you. The responsibility in terms of your ability to meditate on the word of God is not something you can delegate to any other person. You have to take a personal responsibility. Whichever way you can read the word of God, whichever language you understand well, but we need to soak our faith on the word of God. And they say the Roman soldier would soak the shield in water because it has an effect. And that is why we encourage the impact of the word of God in giving us that faith that is so solid to be able to destroy any arrow of the enemy. This is a very, very important lesson and I pray that as we continue to examine issues that we shall examine, we will all be fully, fully equipped. We must refuse to let ourselves become the devil's victim. One of the things that all my life I tell God to help me is never to allow myself to, be, to become a victim of situations. I've never wanted to find myself in a situation where I consider that I'm helpless and there's nothing I can do. Even when there are challenges that come from every direction. And you and I must refuse to be victims. Refuse to let yourself be the devil's victim. Hold your word dust shield of faith high in front of in front of the enemy, and your life will remain secure. And his faith shield will protect us from anything the enemy throws at us through the dynamic, explosive power of God. Now, there are some certain lessons we are going to draw from the text. And today we shall only cover one of them, the next time we gather on a Wednesday night, we'll go to the next one. But the thing we're going to address ourselves to as point number one is that there is an enemy, there is an evil enemy that is seeking to destroy you. That one is without doubt. But we have already been given the strategy of defeating that enemy. Satan is the evil one, a hideously malevolent power who is relentlessly opposed to God and to God's people. So Satan is subtle. It is, he has some power that he wields, limited power though. So as we saw, this is not just an impersonal force of evil in the world, but rather an intelligent, cunning, personal evil spirit 
who commands an army of evil spirits at war against God. And you and I must know that God is the one that assures us that we shall defeat this enemy through his power. Many professing believers live as though they are ignorant of the devil's devices. They seem to ignore the fact that Satan and the demons are gunning for them. And yet they often stroll into enemy's territory as if they were taking a walk in the park. Listen to this. Many believers watch movies and TV programs that pollute their minds with filthy data or information. So my question to you is, what are these framing arrows of evil that you're dealing with? Because these framing evils may, inc may, may, may include all forms of temptation that are common to us all. It may be the temptations of pride, the temptations of selfishness that we all battle every day. These are the framing arrows of, the, there are framing uh, arrows of discouragement, despair, doubting, and especially doubting God, doubting what God has promised. I challenge every leader, every believer anywhere, beware of these framing arrows which come in forms of temptations, could come in form of pride, could come in form of discouragement, despair, doubting, God, blasphemous thoughts, wrathful images. All these can be allos that can displace you from what God has desired. As I asked the worship team to take their position to help me wrap this service today, I urge all of us to beware of these framing arrows. What are you dealing with in the list of the framing arrows? Have you come to a point in which you have started doubting the promises of God regarding your safety, regarding the promise of your health? Is it not God who has said and told us in his word? In the pieces of John, Beloved, this is the, the piece of, of John. John, uh, you know, verse number two. Uh, it is it's the only thing that is in the third book, the third book of John, verse two. It says, Beloved, that John two, the piece of John. It only has one, so it's verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. I pray that your soul will, be, will prosper because you believe God and you are not going to doubt Him at all. Because doubt is something that many people are struggling with in this COVID. 19, COVID-19 season. The enemy will follow up the arrows with the, the accusation telling you that you can uh, call yourself a Christian but look at how you are thinking. You're just fooling yourself. The enemy can tell you. You aren't following Christ as you, you should. How do you deal with these attacks? Those are the questions that you and I must ask ourselves. What will secure you at this season is faith. And I've said it before and I want to repeat it as I close this meeting today. That what will secure you is your faith. And you, if you have friends, that whenever you talk to them, all they share with you is their doubt and fears. Maybe you need to change them. And have friends that can encourage you towards faith in God. Towards standing firm in God. That's all you need. You don't need people just to tell you 
about how hopeless the situation is. Don't to repeat the statistics of threats that are given or people who say that this disease now is with us and we maybe it is going to carry the rest of the year. We may not have any, any, any social life for ourselves because of the disease. Can we lift our faith to God and petition him to bring this COVID-19 down so we can have our lives back again and we can have the journey towards recovery the economic situation that we find ourselves in. Let every head be bound as we pray. And if you're there, you're saying, Pastor, I have heard. And I'm convicted because I've nursed some doubts and fear. And you're saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want you to pray this from the depth of your heart. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come and stand in your presence in need of prayer because I've doubted your word. I've doubted your promise. Forgive me for my doubts. Fortify my faith to withstand the allows of the enemy. Thank you for loving me. If you're there today and you're saying, Pastor, pray for me, I want to be born again. That's where everything begins. You cannot connect to the faith we are talking about if you are still in sin or any form of wickedness. I want to say, dear Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Come and save my soul. Give me a hope that no one can take away and help me to walk in faith because faith is what guarantees me victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we thank you for the time we have had together. We thank you for the promise we have in you. Be with us, Lord, as we come to the close of the service. Be with our members everywhere, even those who connect to this service and those who connect to this program allow the world as it goes on Facebook. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Dismiss us, Lord God, and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible.